So in this video, I'm going to explain a bit about how you could use Kerrigan to play Chain of Ascension. The right of Rakshir will soon begin. Amon's loyalness seat as first ascendant. So here you can see that I'm actually soloing the map, which means that my ally has left the game and I'm going to control his SCVs. And I'm not going to take his expansion or his main base. So I will play it as if I am doing this alone. My ally also made one worker before he left, so I did not get his starting 50 minerals. You can also see that I'm making a macro hatch, and I, I usually make a macro hatch instead of a queen. You can use queens if you like, but because most of the time I forget to inject, so I just use a macro hatch. In the early game, the macro hatch also gives you a larve quicker because the building time for a hatchery is quicker than the building time of a queen plus the time it takes for the first inject to spawn. The enemy is sending forces to support them. We got some your efforts are futile. All right. Just cleaning up this wave here. After you clean up the wave heading for Janara, you can start cleaning up your expansion. But remember to clear the wave heading for Janara first before clearing the expansion. Otherwise, they will push Janara to the pit. Alright, so I'm just gonna clean up the first base here. I've also put the two workers in the same control group here, so I can move them at the same time and push whenever I want to. So notice that the first hybrids have spawned after Janara has reached this area here. Alright, Kerrigan is just kiting for a bit. I'm making a Nidus Worm here because Nidus gives you creep, and Kerrigan has a passive that lets her regenerate health and attack quicker when she is on creep. Also, know that it doesn't matter whether it's your own creep, your ally's creep, or the enemy's creep. As long as it's creep, Kerrigan can benefit from health regeneration and attack speed. So. One useful strategy is to deploy Nidus Worm on areas that does not have creep, so Kerrigan can fight with the creep bonus. Of course, she can also hide in the worm if she is about to die, so it is always a good idea to make a Nidus Worm next to Kerrigan whenever she is fighting. So now I am heading towards the second hybrid spawn area. I am going to clean it up before I trigger the hybrid spawns. So the second hybrid would spawn when Janara reaches this area here. Oh, uh, know that the hybrid spawns when Janara reaches certain locations. So you would want to prepare yourself, like I did, with cleaning the area before you try to trigger the spawn. If you do not clean the area of static defenses before you trigger the spawn, then you would have a harder time in clearing the hybrids. Also notice that Kerrigan can pretty much kill everything, as long as it's ground. She basically destroys any ground units. Notice how I did not have to use any Hydralists. Also notice here that I used Leaping Strike to kill the Lurker. I do not need detection to kill these ground cloaked units. Also see how convenient it is for me 
to just enter Anidas and come out. So always make Nidus worms. They are always worth it. So here I am moving Kerrigan to the middle area in order to use the immobilization wave at the 10 minutes mark. The cool up time for immobilization wave is 10 minutes. Once you use the immobilization wave damage as the mastery, it will deal 200 damage, which kills all Zerg units except Ultra Lists, Aberrations, and Brute Lords. So it is extremely powerful against Zerg units. Also notice the extreme long range of the wave. So you would want to use it in the middle of the two bases to hit them both at the same time. This is a common strategy, which is to deploy a Nidus network right after you use Immobilization Wave. With almost all of the units dead, the Hydra lists can clean up very easily. But one thing is that the Hydra list is very weak. It dies very easily. So do not clean a base unless you have used Immobilization Wave or you have other units to tank. If you try to A move with Hydra lists, you all of them would just die pretty easily. They have high damage, but they can't survive on their own. The Alright, just cleaning up here. Once Genara reaches this location here, around here, the third hybrid will spawn here. But I do not have a mobilization wave ready yet, so I do not want to trigger the hybrid spawn. Which is why I am not pushing Genara any further right now. Also notice how I just went from here to the other side of the map here. Again, showing the powerful use of Nidus Worms. I lost some Hydras here, but doesn't really matter. Notice how I just killed the Lurker using Leaping Strike. I do not need detection. Alright, my ultimate is almost ready, so I can get into position. See how one use of the wave has killed everything except Ultra Lists and Hybrids, which would be very easy for the Hydras to clean up. As long as you have Kerrigan to tank for them, of course. So I'm not going to trigger the last sets of hybrids before my mobilization wave is ready, so I will use this time to clean up the base. Also notice how all of them are very low health, and a lot, and only a few units remain. This is because I used immobilization wave in the middle before, so cleaning this space now is extremely easy. An enemy base stands in the way of my victory. I'm just gonna wait until my wave is ready for use again. I'm going to hide my Hydra lists inside the worm, so they would not take damage until I have killed the escort units. You could always make more than two ome Omega worms because they can act as a 100 health wall to tank damage. In this map, I only made two Nidus networks, but of course you can make more than two. And if you deploy them around this area here, 
they serve as a wall to protect your units. Each Omega Worm has 1000 health, so they are actually free walls to tank for you, and extremely useful. So the last set of hybrids will spawn when Janara reaches this triangle on the ground here. And I did not push Janara until I am ready to use my immo immobilization wave. Alright, I can just immediately use immobilization wave and all of the attacking units have been killed. Except Hydralis, I mean except the Ultras. And now it is safe for me to deploy my Hydra lists and kill the remaining hybrids. Alright, now all the hybrids are dead, I can push further. I made a mistake here, I did not move my own drone for some reason, but doesn't really matter. Also notice that I am sacrificing my units in order to delay this attack wave. Because if the attack wave is not distracted, it will head for Janara, which would delay your pushing. You, so you would want to attract these units or aggro the units to attack your own in order to prevent them to prevent them from going to Janara. So it doesn't really matter that my units are dying as long as I am distracting them, and they are not going for Janara. So that's it. Hope you enjoyed the video, and see you next time.